very outdated, kind of the bit. Um, <laughs> the joke doesn't work when you have to explain it as well. Yeah. Unfortunately. Wizard is mid, says Mr. Clean. Wizard is very mid, I must say. I agree with that one. Although can be, and again, another reason why, why I personally really like Mega Draft is every once in a while, Wizard is just an OP pick because of the way the Mega Draft shakes out. Yeah, definitely. There's so many OP cards that are only OP in Mega Draft just because of the situation, which is quite nice to see, actually. And uh, a Mortar Cannon Cart Poison, which is something that we used to see maybe about six months ago, but definitely not as much recently. Most likely going to be Graveyard here from Arlen Toas. To me, this shows weakness in some kind of way if you're having to play a deck that's not really good at the moment, hoping for a matchup. But to be honest, that's the same thing I'd do against Mo anyway, so I don't blame him. Yeah, that's the... I think you got, I think you hit both parts of it, right? Is you're not expecting that you're going to go out and outplay Mohammed Light, so try to figure out the out matchup. Mm -hmm, for sure. Nice prediction there on the... Uh, on the mortar. I don't know if it will amount to too much if he managed to get the earthquake down. And I mean, this is very similar to what we saw earlier today from Mohammed Light. Instead, it was a hog mortar deck rather than a um, mortar GY. But you know, you're, we're seeing Mohammed just try to get opportunistic hog riders to the opposite lane of these mortars. Although one key difference here the snowball for some of that slow and helping damage down. We'll see if that's a big factor as time goes on. Yeah, I think uh, Arden Toast is going to have a hard time dealing with these guards in the graveyard. Even though the poison comes down, most too good, he'll end up pressuring at the same time and it won't always uh, work out too well for him. That's a really nice Skeleton King there. Musketeer is going to get ruined very quickly. And see, there we go. We see the hog at the perfect time there from Mo. Even though he gets a bit of an advantage, if he doesn't hog there and he gets the grid down, it could be a little bit of a sticky situation, but Mo just presses perfectly. He's not expecting to get many hog hits, he just doesn't want the attack to continue. And I called it perfectly Giovanni TV, public school in America. You're right. Hey, I went to public school too, I just paid attention. <laughs> Throwing heat here in the final match, both on the board and in yeah. the cast. Here we go, sudden death overtime on its way. Arden Toas, I really wanna know if he's talking to somebody or talking to himself. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I think he's he's been making a few plays based on Elixir, so I'd assume he's talking to someone else. Um, just for that extra little information that you can take. Me personally though, if I have someone in my ear while I'm playing, I just can't concentrate at all. So I always have to say, oh, I'm gonna have to mute my mic or something. Yeah, I, I am much the same way. Mortar picks up the hog, and there's no King Tower activation troop available against this Mortar. I don't think the, the Goblin's King Tower activation, I don't think you can do that with the Ice Spirit because I don't think it sits in the right spot when you drop it. I've never seen someone attempt it with the Ice Spirit, so I'm assuming it's not, it's not possible. Yeah, I think the same too, but it's always one of those things that doesn't happen for like three years and then you'll see one clip get a thousand likes on Twitter and suddenly it's all you can do it. Yeah. But uh yeah, I think so too. I didn't even know you could do it with goblins. I only knew skeletons and then I saw someone do it with goblins and thought, oh yeah, of course that makes sense. Guards working against the graveyard poison push, log to clean up in the end, final minute triple elixir on its way. This is when graveyard can get dangerous. Lead right now for Arden Toas in our first game. Yeah, and I think uh, definitely advantage Arden Toast as well. Just because of these snowballs and graveyards, he's able to as well cycle cannon carts in the back with, with no worry, and as soon as he builds up kind of somewhat of a push, um, he can do a lot of damage. The EQ plus log plus hog trying to break on through on that right hand side. Can't do it. Late mortar cleans up. 22 18. And Arden Toast doesn't have a building in cycle now, so this is going to be quite a bit of damage, I think. But even if it's not a bit of damage, it's earthquake on the tower without Arden Toast getting a graveyard down in time. Massive hog shot, 13 seconds left. This graveyard is either it or it's game over. Mortar high, Musketeer trying to work. The Mortar might target tower though. Mortar does target tower, snowball in. Not gonna be enough, Mohammed Light holds on and gets game number one. 
and that was such beautiful play from Mohamed, like that opposite lane pressure in that last 30 seconds just allowed him to, to keep cycling those hogs, force Arden Terrace to do a defensive mortar and just not concentrate on offensive graveyards. Really well played by Mo. Arden pretty unhappy with that one. We, let's see, might see E-Giant from Arden coming up. Mo does like to go minor. We'll see if there's a NATO deck here for Arden. Bomber does look like potentially E-Giant. Arrows to clean up. Yeah, I think you've called it perfectly. I think it looks like it's going to be E-Giant versus Pigs here, most likely. Which, um, because of the Bomber, it will definitely help E-Giant slightly, but I still think advantage Pigs. Zappy's high. Giant Skeleton to protect. And a slight chance here from Arden Terrace to make an outplay if you could do like an E-Giant and get the lightning off. They get a little damage here, even if it's just the bomber. Nice NATO too. This is what Arden Terrace wow. is going to have to do to win this game. He's going to have to get a lot of early damage or make use of a, a bad cycle. Great early damage here. Both players just resetting. I think uh, Mo won't do too much offensively in this uh, single Luxor. If anything, it'll be Arden Terrace just trying to make good of a bad situation. Skeleton sets up to the left-hand lane as we reach halfway through our opening three. And so far, it's been almost all Arden after a really rough game number one. You see the scoreboard right-hand side, 4-0 in games so far for Shot for Cal Pugans. Does Chivas Esports have another big match in them? Or are we going to suddenly see 5-0 and a really dangerous deciding set number three for Chivas. Mo just going with the lane block here, mirroring that uh, giant skeleton early. It's just a really safe play. He knows he's not really going to be punished for it as long as it's in the same lane. A nice little aggressive push here. Fly Machine's still alive and he's going to have to do something in the middle. There we go. And this is going to be a lot of damage here for Mo. Even if it's not a lot of damage, he's going to be up a lot of elixir. He'll be able to reset again and then go in the back with that elixir lead. And look at how the E-Giant had hoped to put damage on that flying machine, but the giant skeleton pulled it away. And that's that same flying machine that's still 100% healthy. So the abuse of the flying machines right now causing huge problems for Arden. That NATO's not it. King Tower activation at this late stage of the game. Could it be impactful? Maybe. The dual lane pressure, though, giving Mo nice options as we go into sudden death. Yeah, and Mo just playing really perfectly at this point. Um, really making use of the flying machines. I think that's how you win this matchup. Although this may be slightly a bit difficult for him to deal with. You'll have to get the Zappies down and he'll be fine, to be honest with you. Um, maybe a flying machine in the middle just help clean things up. Or even on the left, that works too. No cannon as well. He'll definitely go with the pigs here. Save those arrows for that bomber. And that lightning comes out and doesn't get the flying machine because of the pig lightning block. Tons of damage on that left hand side. Mo very happy. You can see tickled pink with that. We'll one. see a mirror here possibly as well. There we go. Arrows ready for the bomber. Nice defense, but still good damage, and he's not down elixir. And now just setting up the defense into the opposite lane here and Arden deciding, hey, you're gonna put a giant skeleton there. Let me put the push the opposite direction. And Mo gonna double down away from the E-Giant. Yeah, down there he's got this fisherman and he's pushing on the side. He won't have enough to lightning it. The NATO doesn't come off. And those Zappies now got free reign. Switching lanes one more time. Here. Good damage gonna come in here. The NATO almost offsetting 
the Fisherman, but that's real damage. That's significant damage with the 20 seconds left. 718 to 825. Giant Skeleton down, left-hand side, 15 seconds left. Pig's trying to sneak on by. Will there be a second cannon cycle here? Bomb tower going toward cannon cycled high. Arrows, is there a, a, a block here? Moe's gonna drop, no, does not drop the pigs. Doesn't the matter. Oh, the NATO steals it for Arden Toas. Wow. The NATO steals it. And I am honestly a little bit shocked that Mo didn't drop the mirrored pigs on the right hand side for a cheeky lightning block attempt. Yeah, I think that was the play at that point, but he had to save that mirror for that second arrow. He's hoping that Arden Toes didn't get the get the mirror down, uh, get the NATO down, rather. I think the only other play there for Mo was going mirror pigs rather than uh, saving for the mirror arrows on the left hand side. Oma here for Mo, looking like he's going with E Giant for a NATO deck, possibly, unless he's playing something off meta. Um, this drill coming down. Oh, sorry, this Mighty Mana coming down makes me think it's drill, just based on what's been played today so far. And chat's still reacting to the bananas finish that we just saw there. And it's E Giant for Mo this time. An aggressive E-Giant, not much will happen here. Odin to us will still have to spend goblins or an ice boot. And uh, pretty safe from both players. Bomber gonna be a really nice card though for Mo here in this matchup if it is drill. Typically we normally see just a bar barrel instead of that bomber, but the bomber's a nice pick from Jebu, so whoever decided to put it in there. And this is, of course, in-game duels, so all the decks are pre-submitted. And you're dividing up to four decks, not just three. So some complicated choices there. Real place in the anti nato position by Arden Toas, a nice little play. If you place it on the tower um, in the middle, it can get an easy NATO activation, which can really uh, lessen your chance to win in the game. E Giant sets up to the strong side. Phoenix nice golden there. Yeah, that was that was. Yeah. Nice to suck that out. Yeah, knowing that Bomber and Barbara have both been used, always going to get a negative trade, and you've got to defend them now that they're four, four troops. Lightning's doing the work. For these E Giant decks, we just saw it last game, seeing it here in this game as well. Lightning being going to be very important as time goes on. E Giant does not get a reflection shot on that tower. As we are in our double elixir period now, the lead thin, but there for Mohammed Light. Although nice plays dominant. there for Martin Towers, forcing uh, lots of extra responses that typically you wouldn't have saw in that push. A nice log too, hitting the tower on the Phoenix. And this e giant will get a little bit of reflection here, lightning into clear dual lane damage now for Mohammed Light. Arden Toas primarily, almost exclusively, on that right lane, despite a tiny touch the other direction. Yeah, Arden Toas definitely, I think, playing slightly better than Mo at this point, although that can change very quickly as soon as Mo decides to turn it on. He's so good with these control decks now as well, just as good as Cycle. And varying things up here. Oh, and the Bomber trying to get out in front of mm -hmm. those Goblins. Timing not quite there for the Bomber's shots. Nice E-Giant too. He's going to have to overspend for this. And you love if your Mohammed Light scene drills have to come out defensively rather than offensively. Lightning goes, does get the drill off the board and a little bit of damage here but that is not a comfortable lead for Mo. 25 HP well that'll get taken care of right about boom there nice fireball too getting the cannon and the golden knight lots of goblin hits too and the death damage bomb this is really good for Arden Toas he's playing superb triple elixir in 
Bird does pop a little bit. Golden Knight clears. Bomber sets up for the left-hand lane. What's Moe's plan going to be for this drill as the Mighty Miner Ice Spirit goes for a NATO to the King Tower activation. Bar Barrel to clear. Has to go high with the Golden Knight. Can its ability get off and take care of the Muskie? And it can. E-Giant in on the left-hand lane. Lightning now just gets Unlucky. the Musketeer and does not get anything else. Problem Lightning. That's the second Lightning that's only hit one target for Mohammed Light today. So we've seen that happen a couple of times here. Fireball plus Drill in. And this is looking more and more like that's all sewn up. Arden Toas going to get a huge clutch for Chivas Esports and tie things up going into our third set. Yeah, I've got to say, although I don't want to, I don't think Mo has looked on it on it. He 